eyes close and dreams go free Got an angel next to me Namaste and Lakesh, my family, and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Surfer. I am your host, Rion. And I am Isabella Green. And we are here to rock your world. <laughs> as far as this cosmic center of awesomeness known as Sedona, Arizona, where we are currently broadcasting and recording this amazing episode in which today, tonight, wherever you are, we will be discussing the avians. Sister, I know we have many different interpretations on some of the visuals. I know when you go into deep meditation and she calls me very excited in the morning. I was with the avians all night last night and I got a great a bunch of downloads for us. Right. Uh, before we get into that, I would first like to open the door on how vast and how large, obviously, not only this galaxy is, but this universe. And how many different interpretations and how many different species of avians are out there. I know my brother Corey, Mr. Good, has done an amazing job, you know, speaking about the blue avians and all of that amazing content that he has brought down for us here on Earth. Mm. But I'd also like to express, you know, a little personal story. That back when I moved here and I was activated in 2009, when I moved to Sedona, um, and my third eye was on and my guides are basically telling me in Sedona, it's like a little kingdom, right? He was, exp my guides were explaining to me, this is where the Lyrans live, son. And then they would point to the other side of the mountain, right? And he would be like, this is where the, the bird tribe lives, right. bird tribe. I was always explained at to what that, you know, was, was bird tribe. Yep. So when Corey did such a great detailed interpretation of that sort of galactic council functionality, I also felt that many other avian species were kind of left out. Mm -hmm. So sister, I know you have some great information specifically on the other races you've been encountering. What are some of the things that you've been seeing with the avians and some of the wisdom they'd like to share? I have experienced the race that called themselves the Aves mm -hmm. and they were white feathered beings mm. of about 8 to 18 feet tall. It's large. And some of them had wings all over, not just wings in the back like we see, but wings, it looked like they had wings all around their bodies. Mm. And they expressed to me mm -hmm. during the session that I recently facilitated, and then I took it to the next level in my meditation yes. that I'm sharing with you. Um, they expressed that they are an ancient race mm -hmm. that populates many galaxies. Mm -hmm. They said that they live in many different galaxies, many different habitats, although mm -hmm. habitats are similar, right. it seemed like, because I, what I saw of the habitats that I will share, but they expressed that they perhaps are the most evolved of mm -hmm. the bird tribe species. And this is what mm -hmm. they said. They said the hum that humanity knows them as the winged ones mm. or the bird tribe mm -hmm. and that they have been present on earth with human race mm -hmm. showing themselves in this area by the way in Sedona, in Sedona. as the bird tribe yes. uh, to the natives that interacted with them or learned from them. Mm -hmm. They also showed themselves and uh, brought uh, were known to other cultures in uh, human reality, like Egyptian cultures, and we'll right. get into well, that new, in a moment. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, um, Osiris, Toth, his spirit animal being the Ibis, many different interpretations. Horus, of the, Horus, Horus is the, is the bird-headed mm -hmm. uh, deity in that culture, too. Yes. And so they express that they have contributed to not only to development of galaxies, their own mm -hmm. species all over galaxies that mm -hmm. populate many different habitats. And like we have a lot of different kinds of birds all over the place. So yes. it's similar in the galactic space as well. But they, that they also contributed their DNA to creation of specific beings here on Earth right. that we know as angelic beings, that the 
function of flight and mm -hmm. that white feather was actually uh, a contribution from their DNA mixed with human DNA and so we received the type of uh, hybrid species that we yes. know as angelic beings. They also expressed that there are different other types of beings that uh, kind of trickle down from their uh, level of development, their level of uh, evolution yes. and their frequency, fractality. fractality. And so mm -hmm. that they said, we're not the blue avians that you know of on your planet, mm -hmm. but the blue avians are just a different species of the type of being that we are. Understood. So this is what I received as far as to answer your question. <clears throat> when I meditated on this, I wanted to share some insights. I requested, and we were talking about the avians last night. I'm like, all right, guys, you know, get up on your drop ships. <laughs> give me some content that hasn't been shared down here and explain to me why we have such kinship or so much respect, mm -hmm. you know, obviously for the birds mm -hmm. and the evolution. And, you know, I love birds. Yeah, I, I, yeah, have, I have, yeah two families or three families of blue jays outside that I, I feed. I love them. I've named them. I have hummingbirds. <laughs> I have all kinds. I love birds. Okay. I'm just a huge fan. Yeah, of me birds. too. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. I just love them. They're like yeah. little, I just love them. I have 60. They make 50. me happy. They, I yeah. don't know. They're just like, yeah, it's morning and I'm eating seeds. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just like, you're like, you might as well be a fairy. I feel like I'm like opening a buffet line outside and they're just like, we don't got to do nothing but chirp for you. I'm like, whatever you need. I'm and here. the birds you know? shift, the, even in this life, in this reality, in this dimension yes. in 3D, the birds are known to shift between dimension with ease, just like that. Yes. Whoop, vanished into a different dimension, whoop, back to you. I have about 50 to 60 birds in my yard every yeah. morning too, because I feed them as well. You know, absolutely love there's birds. something about feeding the birds. You yeah. know, once you ask the old guys in the park, the old man in New York that feed the ducks, what is it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah. something about like, yeah. we love you guys. So some more uh, real things that I wanted to kind of bring down for you guys. And I'll explain it to you similar to this. So when I was asking, I'm like, what is the issue with the wings? What mm. is the issue with the bloodline? Mm. What had happened a long time ago where our bloodlines kind of one group of bloodline went to the left mm -hmm. and one went to the right. <clears throat> and I was asking my guides, what's some information to bring down? Because I also feel that the reptilian flavor, the mm -hmm. reptilians out there, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, and, uh, you know, some of the different Mayan cultures, you know, and some of their belief systems, obviously, you know, they'll have like the serpent yeah. with like the bird on top, the winged serpent. The winged serpent. Yeah. So yeah. what does that mean? Like terrestrial ground, terrestrial, like say lower mind, mm. upper mind right? The bird, the wings, mm -hmm. the flight, mm -hmm. right? So I was trying to break this down and my guides explained it to me in this way. So I hope you guys appreciate it, right? Don't shoot the messenger, man, but I think I have a little bit of insights for us down here in duality. Okay, here we awesome. go. Just letting you know. Let's okay, so it. this is how they broke it down to me. They're like, son, mm -hmm. first of all, I love Lord Brahma. I met him up in the mountains of Jammu, Kashmir. I didn't even know who Brahma was. Until I was gridding India. <laughs> I was actually making the grids in my backyard to grid India and the, his whole holy mountain in Jammu, Kashmir. Wow. And they were like, Brahma, mm -hmm. Brahma. I'm like making these grids like, who's Brahma? <laughs> I literally Googled it. And it's like the, you know, the, the, the Vedic, like the Hindu, like mm -hmm. God of creation. So yeah. I was like, you're cool. Anyways, let me express this to you. How I was explained with how things work in duality was in creation, in my understanding of it, if Brahma, right, was the mother, father, the creator in that religion, okay, let's just say, Krishna was on the left side, on the light side, mm -hmm. Shiva was also his son on the night side, mm -hmm. there's duality, dad, you got the two sons, you got Krishna on the light side, the left side, your heart side, you got Shiva on the night side, you know, I like to think about him, he's the bad boy mm -hmm. who got Lakshmi. Mm. You got the hottest girl, you know, in, in different <laughs> religions, you know, girls always like the bad boys. I, I don't know what it is, you know, you know, uh, Hephaestus got Aphrodite, you know, you know, Hera, you did your best there. What I'm trying to get though, Aphrodite's the bomb. Now, right. what I'm getting to is this. That's personal for me. Okay. Mm, what I'm yeah. getting to is this. When I think of the bird tribe and I was asking 
And basically what they showed me was on the like reptilian draconian duality stream that mm. goes from where they are right now all the way back to the beginning. Because all the way back to the beginning, we were aspects of that high seraphim uh-huh. or the high winged angels. Right. Mm-hmm. So I thought to myself, what would a high winged angel and whatever basic form that looks like, let's just mm-hmm. say it's raw energy of the divine creation itself. Mm-hmm interacting into a species millions and millions of years ago and then what would that look like based upon their environment Mm -hmm. what world they were raised on Mm -hmm. their progenitors what does that look like right right so what i got to was that in that reptilian type stream of consciousness going back to their home world and the whole thing in this space on the light side maybe that was the krishna side Mm -hmm. or the you know, dragon, imagine that, you know, that reptilian side that actually chose spirit, love, abundance, nice. creation. Mm-hmm. They were on the Krishna, play the flute and let's just chill out, baby. And, mm-hmm. you know, flap your wings, you know, shake a tail feather. Right. On the night side, though, on the Shiva function, it was more like draconian, you know, uh, the controlled, the more terrestrial forms all the way down to when they blended, you know, in a new, more hominid form mm-hmm. to the reptilians down here. Geico. Mm. You have Geico, Geico, and then you have like dragons. I like dragons. I don't know about Geico, but I like you. So some levity to this conversation for you guys. So what I'm trying to say for my heart is this. One form took the spiritual path of creation itself and was like, yo, I love everything. Everything everything is awesome. Everything is awesome when you work on a team. Everything is awesome. And the other side of it, right, for whatever reasons, you know, look, it's duality. Okay, mm-hmm. we're in this game together. Yeah. You got the light side, you got the night side, you got some of the guys in the middle doing our best here mm-hmm. to explain the game. Okay, no judgment whatsoever. But what I'm trying to say is I get in conversation sometimes with my Drake, and I feel that sometimes when they lost that flight, or imagine losing your wings, they mm-hmm. kind of lean towards the nanotechnology or mm-hmm. the technology, mm-hmm. or we have to have the most advanced technologies because we can't mimic what our upper dimensional beings can do just with their will. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? If you have an upper dimensional version of yourself, say, you know, say, um, Rod to air. I forget his name. I think that awesome guy that Corey talks about, Mm -hmm. say he's a sixth density being. Right. Okay. Check it. Is he truly a sixth density being, or is he actually a much higher dimensional being that can compress himself into sixth density just to open Mm -hmm. a doorway and pop in and go, Hey guys, Mm -hmm. check it. Mm -hmm. What's going on down here? You guys need to kind of act in accordance with universal law. Right. We're in the 3D physical plane. So imagine being a guy up on a spaceship like, this is me. Mm -hmm. There's only us. (laughs) I have a badge and I'm a big deal. I have a spacecraft. Okay, that's awesome, right? And we had this shit like 15,000 years ago, but it's cool right now, right? Anyways. So I'm trying to get to, da, da, da. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It is, you know, we run shit. Like, I, I don't really know where to put all that. Okay. Again, more humor. Cause that's how your higher selves laugh at this game too. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that why I think the blue avians get so much props is if we're from the same species and that's the nice version mm-hmm. and say, maybe I'm like, why do the Draco, they, how do you know it's a Royal? They still have wings. Mm. Maybe they not might be not be mm-hmm. full fledged. I can lift off the ground, but to their own species, right? That's still a winged dude. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. saying this because I'm trying to break some of this stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get into the nitty gritty of you guys did this and you guys did that. And oh my goodness gracious! What I'm trying to say is our species, our souls are very, very old. Mm-hmm. Our souls came to this planet to learn how to get along with one another Mm -hmm. while the whole universe watches. Right. Stay in there. So what I'm trying to get to, I think that when that split happened, right, that progenitor or that like high seraphim angelic Mm -hmm. function, Mm -hmm. right, probably older than the angelics, just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have have the words down here in the vocabulary that you, you know what I mean? (laughs) Underikishia tohumbi fiash. No, where we right. come from. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm trying to say is that that's how it was kind of explained to me in the sense of like, oh, so they explained to me like, yo, it's like Krishna and Shiva, bro. And the high Sarah from bloodline came through one chosen the duality game. If they were going to play, what polarity are you going to choose? And then mm-hmm. once you rock that polarity, 
you obviously, the goal of the whole polarity game is get to your center. Mm -hmm. Get to your center. Right. If evolution is an apartment building and me and you are sitting on the third <laughs> level, let me make this real easy for everyone on earth mm -hmm. listening to me right now. Okay. How do you evolve or get to the higher frequency of dimensional understanding and vibration? Well, what if I told you in this huge apartment building, there's a huge magical world on the left-hand side. We call this oh, lollipop in sugar land. Okay. <laughs> and then on the night side, we have like, oh, kind of looks like Hollywood on steroids, you mm -hmm. know, like whiskey doubles and let's get it on with some, with some boots and stuff. I don't know. Okay. Whatever gets you going. Uh -huh. But just so you guys know, on level three in this game, the only way up that stairwell is in the middle. Mm -hmm. So no matter how far you go float around in the love and love and love or how far you go into Darth Vader land, just so you guys know, and for all your higher selves watching me now, the only way up is to come to your center mm -hmm. and then walk up at a 45 degree angle to the next floor right. of evolution. The issue is that sometimes a lot of things happen and I'm not trying to minimize some of the conflicts or the negative experiences or people's things that they've experienced. Mm. I'm not mm -hmm. whatsoever. I'm just trying to say in myself. Some of the things I've had to view on this planet, cleaning stuff up behind the scenes. I know my sister, mm -hmm. when she would accompany me on some of these activations and she was jumping in like, oh my God, you are, <laughs> we can get, it's a whole different video, right? When I was doing my run yeah. across this world, what I came to understand is this. True creator gods always create with their hearts. Why? Mm-hmm. You have to understand how your creation is going to affect others in the collective consciousness right. of any sphere, space, dimension, reality, or realm that you're creating in. Mm -hmm. So what I feel for my brothers and sisters on both sides in this duality game, I speak to both of you now, okay? The issue is that coming together mm -hmm. is the true sign of mastery, which obviously grants you the ability to graduate earth school. Right. So I'd love to say I love the avians. I'd love to say I love all aspects of creation and to also understand, here's a visual. If we're in the physical right now in 3D, right? Imagine your 10D Draco from his perspective. He's on the ground floor. Who's his light and night side? Mm. He may have a high level avian on his light love side right. from when he's looking up going, hey, help white, me white. out over here. White, and then what? You know, like a white avian mm -hmm. and then on the night side. So when I was kind of expressed to me in the fourth dimensional, sixth dimensional function of reality. That blue avian, I think, function is coming from not only the energetics of that dimension. For, for to me, I see it as sixth dimensional. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's sixth density, mm -hmm. but I'm saying dimensional. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to express is that the color represented was a color that a human being could see based upon their limited perception of reality and the biological eyeballs they're staring at at yeah. 30 frames per second. So in a universe of imagine, I like to think of hair for some reason. Like mm. imagine the goddess of creation's hair. Gold. Golden gold. hair. And yeah. there's like a million types of color in the universe, right? Mm -hmm. Humans in their visual spectrum can only see like four strands of hair. Mm. How can four strands of hair tell you what's going on in the universe? <laughs> You're staring at a pink crayon, a black crayon, and a blue crayon. Go. <laughs> you know, so what I'm trying to say is whatever color is being reflected, uh, I love blue. Blue is the throat chakra. Blue is that higher level communicato, high speed download, high speed upload. It's a faster communication function. Mm -hmm. It also shows that it's above that green. So it's like almost like a heart mixed with that high speed data transfer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I'm trying to express to you guys across planet Earth is as you guys are integrating yourselves, the way up is through the middle. Mm -hmm. It always has been. Mm -hmm. It always will be. That's why this life is so challenging sometimes, right? To emotionally establish your base average, who you are, why you're here, how many lives you've had here, what you're working on. And then when you're there, what aspects of creation of your own fractality and literally eternal essence are you calling upon? And within calling upon them, which skill sets are they the best at? Mm -hmm. Every race, every species is very good at something. Within yourself, find those things you wish to develop. Find the higher self that best matches that and truly become the highest embodiment of you can in the physical plane. Now, I know you had 
So I, I would <laughs> like to jump right in because yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to jump out. I just don't want to go. Yeah. There were so many things that you touched upon here that I would mm -hmm. like to Absolutely. expand a little bit on or support because yes. The idea that we expand through the center, mm -hmm. what I observe in the activations, in the sessions that I do, that the higher self always comes in the heart center. Mm -hmm. It's like a horizontal. If the person is laying horizontal, there'll be a channel right. that connects them right to that higher self. The aliens that I just worked with were mm -hmm. white feathered. They yes. were so bright. Those that are the ones I've seen, they're the, white feathers. The white light was mm. so bright that you could barely see because it's a non-physical presence. Mm. So you could barely see the entire silhouette. But it, in this particular case, I saw that they came so close that they looked like they were almost coming out of the chest of the person that I was mm -hmm. working with. And they were able to communicate and interact with the physical vessel because... There is the DNA in us, in humans, from the avian species, mm -hmm. given for sure. So when that activation takes place, that DNA strand gets activated and what came first, the chicken or the egg, what I know, right? right. At the same time, there are different types of avian species mm -hmm. and they all have different functionality like yes. you said and they also interact on different dimensional axis yep. and different planes mm -hmm. so perhaps blue avians have a function to interact with 6d like you said and mm -hmm. below and drop into the vehicle or vessel or the image that we're able to observe and bring the type of guidance and work that's required on that For level all we know maybe the human depth of color and what's visible the blue spectrum of light may be the easiest to transverse through a gate through a stargate and actually make yourself reassemble or right because they phase in and phase out right yeah what if it's as simple as this is the color that's most easier for you to see for me to step through and is less you know um that's so funny i'm already talking like with them less tiresome when i'm when i'm communicating with you i just put on the blue suit yeah what i'm trying to say is that what is it in our dna and biologically that allows certain sp spectrums like say the orange or the reds or the golden or the green or the blue what frequency or what color is most easily accessible for us to perceive? And I, as a visual, mm -hmm. translate frequency in color. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of my gifts. Yes. When a specific frequency comes in into my vision, into my meditation, or into the work that I'm doing, mm -hmm. I translate it first as a color, and that is always, always connected to dimension and the frequency of the beings that we interact with. It instantly with. So tells you where accurate. you are and what level you're playing at just by flashing the color. Yeah. Absolutely. So <clears throat> that's a message within itself. Mm -hmm. That's a transmission of where they are so yes. that we can perceive that and translate it in our reality. At the yes. same time, when I asked about the habitat mm -hmm. for the avian beings that presented themselves to me as these white, magnificent, tall, huge beings. Royal, amazing. Kindness. <laughs> yes. And stability and peacefulness yes. and just super solid type of energy uh well, but it's like the, think of an eagle soaring He's yeah just like Pe yeah complete steady yeah you know steady. what i mean just what up you know yeah like that sense of <clears throat> steady flight and yes. confidence but aside from that uh, they showed me the habitat. I said, well, okay, if you're not sharing with me a specific place, a mm -hmm. specific planet or galaxy, they, they said that they're all over different galaxies, all over different uh, planets and yes. locations. So they're everywhere. But uh, I said, show me just an idea of the habitat. So the habitat that they showed me looked like neon shining jungle mm. there were incredible colorful lush vegetation and flowers and water and waterfalls and and just so yummy and, and intense and delicious and beautiful and such high frequency experience i'd move there any day <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it looks like rio and like the rainforest like a cock you know, um, it also reminds me too, you know, uh, before we had the artificial satellite and when we still had, uh, you know, 
different, you know, we had a different sun mm -hmm. on this planet. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of those huge gigantic trees that were like 3,000 feet tall that they yeah. find remnants of in like Utah. They're like, what is this rock formation? They're like, it looks like the stump of a tree mm -hmm. that's like 100 yards in diameter. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that type of fauna and that type of um, environment has existed on this planet in the past as well. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, that was my question. I was mm -hmm. just thinking, I was wondering about that. But there is a version of that. Of course, on Earth, mm -hmm. we brought just like a little bit of every sense to create uh, the environment here, right? But yes. there, there are versions <laughs> of that all across galaxies, my understanding is, mm -hmm. where these bird beings or the winged ones mm -hmm. or the bird tribe, yes. they live in this beautiful state yes. of steady, solid function, energetic presence. And they're very, very aware of what's going on everywhere else. You said an ego. Yes. Imagine the view, you know, yes. the ego's view where they, they're very, very uh, tuned in with every part of mm -hmm. the galaxy that they contributed their either DNA or attention to the teachings. They're high evolved beings. I mean, you know, they, they really are. And, yeah. You know, we're very fortunate here on Earth just to have their participation in our experience right. and our evolution. And we greatly appreciate all of their input and everything they're doing to help, you know, uh, behind the scenes and with us. And to truly also understand, too, with all things that people, you know, there's many different realms of information and misinformation mm -hmm. out there. What I express to all beings watching us now and for all beings to come and things that you're learning about now, I truly wish a higher level of discernment. I really, I truly wish, does it resonate with your heart? Yeah. Your mind can trick you, right? Your mind can be programmed. This yeah. cannot. Yeah. So when you guys are asking yourself these deeper questions, when you guys are communicating with beings, I like to share maybe the galactic protocols to wrap up this video of mm -hmm. how I interact with every single being above and below, sentient beings, and uh, definitely beings up on ship that I like to mess with. <laughs> All right. Okay, so galactic protocols for interacting with dimensional beings above and below, terrestrial, extraterrestrial, anyone that's actually trying to talk to you. Mm -hmm. All right, so <clears throat> number one question I ask them is light or night? And I gesture light, left hand side, or are you night? Mm -hmm. They might look at you stupidly and go, light, night, you. They understand that. They'll go, oh, mm. yeah, okay. Second question I ask is, are you Earth Alliance or are you M are you uh, Federation? Mm. Not the Galactic Federation of Light, but mm. I'm saying Federation as the Federation of, you know, those guys that like to mix up, <laughs> mix up different DNA and, you know, you yeah. know. If this was, uh, they're more like the um, bankers from... Um, Star Wars, mm. you know what I mean? Like the Clone Wars, like the guys that made the robots. Like, are you more like that? Or are you like Earth Alliance, Palladians, Lyrans, Arcturians? Are you here to avians? Are you here to help this world? Right. Or are you here to help yourself? Right. All of a sudden they go, uh-oh, who told you this? Mm -hmm. Third thing I ask is, what's your motivation for interacting with my vessel? Mm -hmm. Why are you here? Right. I do this because I cut through all of the red tape. And I go instantly within those three answers. I know if you're coming from your heart and you're here to help me, right? Mm -hmm. I know if you're actually trying to help this world or you're trying to help yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the third question is, what is your motivation for assisting me or communicating with my vessel? I instantly just chimed in every single one of my higher selves to go, I have this aspect. I have an, you know, someone trying to communicate with me. Mm -hmm. What's their intent? Yeah. And, you know, I, that's why I know for sure, you know, with some of the stuff that Corey talks about, for example, the intuitive empaths, mm. why are they so amazing? Me and you couldn't sit in a room and tell anyone on earth who's lying. You don't think I could sit at a business meeting or one of these corporate dinners or one of these political <laughs> gathers and go, that's a turd, that's a turd, that's a turd. You're definitely a turd. That guy's cool. I could do that that fast. So for all you guys doing this stuff and being empathically leveling up out there across planet Earth, what is the key to that? Your heart. Mm -hmm. Your heart. When you bang your heart into someone, it's kind of like this. Here, push me. I don't want to push a lady. No, push me like you're pushing me. Hey. I'm like, here, I'll be the ET guy. This is what we want. And this is what we're trying to negotiate. Here's me in the audience pushing on you. Push on me. Hey. 
One more time. Hey! <laughs> One more time. Hey! Until the guy's like, what? I'm like, yo, bro, I can feel you, brah. What do you really want to do down here? And they go, uh-oh, someone's monitoring me. So what I'm trying to express is this. Just understand on this planet, your family, your galactic family, are here in suits right now in this game with you. 100,000% understand that. Number two, we're all going through emotional tests, right? And to truly understand that we are all aspects of one another, right? So as the avians, right? And as that in, in the in the duality game, maybe on the night side, maybe some of the drakes, mm -hmm. right? Or what, reptilian mm -hmm. functions, we're not going to run from these topics, okay? What's the balancing mechanism for that species and what are they learning in this evolutionary process? Mm -hmm. What is it that everyone is wishing to share in coming together? These are the things that take many lifetimes to understand and figure out. Our goal on this planet, on this run, and Team Light, and with you guys here on this earth is, we know who we are, we just simply have to remember. And the truth of the avians, and truly what they also speak of, and also in the Law of One, right, is all is one. We are all aspects of each other. I am Rion. And I'm Isabella Green. And thank you so much for watching Cosmic Surfer. We'll see you next time. Peace. Eyes close and dreams go free. Got an angel next to me Hold me close so I can